and a violation of probation. Uh, Ms. Bechtel is going to plead guilty to the admitting to consuming alcohol, also testing positive, and owing a balance of $1,500. She's having a little financial problems. As for the marijuana, Your Honor, she's aware of the test result. She indicates she wasn't smoking. She was in the presence of other people that were smoking. And I don't know that's how they can be acquired. I, I just have a violation for me for alcohol. The marijuana test um, I got today, I spoke to her right before. She wants it sent to the lab. So I sent it to the lab and I put it on the file. Amanda, one of your conditions is you're not supposed to be hanging out with people that are using. I mean, like, that's one of the things. So, like, the argument I get, I'm just letting you know. First, listen to me. Uh, first off, I have heard it all. I have heard it all. Okay. But second, I want you to understand that if your defense is, I didn't smoke marijuana, I was just clam baking in a car with a bunch of people who were smoking marijuana, that is no defense. Because one of your conditions is you're not supposed to be around that. And he... If he's not helping you through this, then he is part of the problem because he has been through this program and he knows what you're in for. Do you hear me? Mr. Mooney, I'm talking about you. Like, I, I can't control what you're doing, but you're going to take someone else down with you now. So, okay. So we're not addressing the marijuana today. We're just addressing this allegation that she tests positive for alcohol on December 30th and admitted to consuming alcohol on December 27th. All right, so um, as to that allegation, how do you want to proceed? I'm guilty, I did drink. I only had a couple of sips, but it doesn't matter. It's not right. I know, I but you had more than a couple of sips. You had more than a couple. See here, Amanda, like the first thing you need to work on is like your honesty with yourself. Like you're not tricking me. No, I didn't. Here's the thing. You took, you, if you just took a, a couple little sips, you took a little slurp of booze on the 27th and an ET, even with the ETG test for you to still be testing positive on the 30th, you took more than a few sips because the test was three days later. Yes, I well, I I did have I didn't have a full drink, but I did have it. I did drink. I I, I ruined my almost seven months of sobriety, and I understand that. Well, you're not really surrounding yourself with good people. If you're surrounding yourself with people right now that don't recognize or complete, let me let me say this differently. You're surrounding yourself with people who a hundred percent know what you're dealing with what the consequences are and they're not telling not going to drink out of your hand and saying what are you doing uh, we were at a family thing but they know they did not i i can't I, they don't know that i was on probation it was not their fault he knows I'm the one that it was his family you were with he knows and he's been here before i'm so i don't know who i'm more disappointed in right now to be honest I should have told him, let's go when it started bothering me. You need an exit plan. If you're if you're going to be in a relationship with someone who's using and you have gotten this far, you need an exit strategy. You need to know how you are not not him, you, how you are going to get out of situations like that. If I may. Uh... As, as Ms. Bechtel indicated, you know, she had seven months of uh, sobriety. She blew it. But the fact that she's tried it, um, I see from the file, she's in the process of being screened for sobriety court. And I think everybody would agree that that's what she needs. She needs the support and the guidance that the court could uh, provide for her. Um, <clears throat> also, we're asking, Your Honor, since this is like the first major violation uh, five days incarceration seems kind of extreme. Um, she does have does work, and obviously it's going to affect her uh, her employment. Uh, you know, all we're asking for, Your Honor, we can change the community service or one day in jail just to give her a wake up and let her you know pursue the sobriety court. Well, She's going sure. to a guidance center, so I, I think her track record shows she has tried. She really messed up. 
but she has tried. And yeah, she, she doesn't sound like she has a very good support system, I and that's that. probably part of a big part of the problem. Um, Miss Bechtel, before I, I'm going to give you a chance on your plea, I want to make sure you know this because I didn't say it until Mr. Gazicki reminded me. This is your third technical violation, so I could give you up to 15 days. Okay, I wanted to make sure you were aware of that. Okay, I'm not going to. Um, but I have to make sure that I put that on the record so you know. So what are we going to do? We can do drug court if you Who want. Who do you live with? Um, right now, I'm at the process of my dad got screwed over the lane contract. So I'm at the process of helping my dad. And like, I really can't go to jail. Like, I will lose my- Amanda, just, I'm just, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with you. Who do you live with? Um, I live at my grandfather's, my son. All right. So how old's your son? Six years old. So you have a six-year-old son and you live with just your grandpa and your son? My grandpa and my brother. Okay. How old's your brother? 40. But he works every day. I, I mean, Hunter can go with Matt if, it, if I do go to jail. I'm not, I, I'm, I am just, I am trying to figure out what's going on with you. Okay, because like now we've got the marijuana use and like Amanda, I are you um, I shouldn't have been around. I know like I you're on probation, you know, when we're talking about like jail time, what was her last violation? Uh, it was I believe it was a positive. No. One of the she missed, was a positive. Yeah, I'm trying to find. So she got a day of court watching for a violation. And the marijuana was right at the beginning. Yeah. And then missed testing, missed an appointment with me. I wasn't here for the last violation. She had a late PBT and missed an appointment. That was her last one. Yeah, you had a late PBT. Hold on, don't talk. Let me read these. And then you have the marijuana use. Okay, look, you're early on in your recovery. You're early on. I don't expect you to be perfect, but Amanda, I expect you to try and to like, you gotta try. Right? And if you if you are around people where you feel like you're not ready for that, here I'll tell you, you're not ready for that. You're not ready to be in circumstances like that. There's a whole process people go through when they're in recovery, right? You need a period where you do not surround yourself with those people until you have the tools to know how to get out of that situation and to know how to make good choices or to have a plan for what you're going to do when you feel tempted and you don't have any of those protections in place. So you're just like out there, you know, without any of the tools with people you shouldn't be around um, that do not support you, do not support you being in recovery. And, you know, that's really concerning. So what are we gonna do? Where do you work? You work full time? Different schedules. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I thought it's seven months. I thought I was able to be around it. It's only seven months, so I didn't look at it like that. And I take responsibility for that thing. But, yeah, but Amanda, like, like here's that. the thing, though. Listen, like, there's a difference between being sober and not using and like being in recovery, right? Like, one of them is like you're just not doing that thing. The other way is you're learning tools and you're co finding coping mechanisms and you're doing all of this work that goes into it. So, and I don't think you're doing that. I don't think you have been. I do think you need to be screened for treatment court. I think it would be good for you. Um, Cause now you're on standard probation. Is she an ISP? But it's clear to me right now that you have a problem because when I have people that have offenses like yours, generally speaking, when someone knows I can throw them in jail for 90 days or 93 days, like that's enough incentive to keep them from using. Right. And when people continue to use when they're I'm literally hey, you just told me doing five days would ruin your life. What would 90 do? 
three months in jail, right? And you would risk that. You would <laughs> risk that over a drink or to smoke some weed or to hang out with people that want to get you in trouble. Like you, you are making choices that lead me to believe that the, the services being provided to you right now are not sufficient. So I want you screened for treatment court. That's happening. What is that? Yeah, it's sobriety it's, court. Sobriety it's, court. Yeah. Like Matt used to go to. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a lot of court. times it works. A lot of people continue to have a productive life and recovery. So it's not. It, and it gives you an opportunity to have all kinds of resources that wouldn't otherwise be available to you. Right. And get you specialists, get you people who understand yeah. addiction to work with you. Yeah, I probably do need that because like I said, it was seven, it was almost seven months. Yeah. January first would have been seven months. I, I messed up. He does not drink. I just want you to know that. This was on me. It's on me. It was my fault. He does smoke weed. I shouldn't be around it when he's smoking. He's got his card, but that was that's mine. And I I it was my fault. I'm just giving him a hard time because I know, I know him. I know him really well. I just don't and I know me. that he knows what you're going through. And I would not, if, if I was with somebody who was in early recovery, who was <laughs> under a, a court supervision, I wouldn't, I would be like, you know, we're going to, we're going to get out of here. This isn't a good place for me to have you right now, because I understand the consequences of your actions and you don't seem to have any self-control. That's what I'm disappointed in. But ultimately it's you. I'm not going to give her five days in jail right now. When can she be screened? When can we handle all of that? Um, I have appointments this afternoon. I can screen her. It's going to have to be next week. All right. You're, you're going to come to um, my women's status hearing next week, Tuesday at 8.30 a.m. And we start at 8.30, not 8.34. You're going to be sitting in these benches in my courtroom by 8.29. You're going to be in here, and I would plan on 825. Mm -hmm. You cannot be late, Amanda, or I will put you in jail. Okay. And You're I said, I'm coming come to judge. We're just going to, I want you to just come to one of the women's status hearings, okay? Yes. And then you're going to court watch a day, too. And then, Lou, if, if five days in jail, I think that's more than generous. But I think you might benefit from seeing what we do in the women's group, and you might actually be like, oh, yes, this would help me in life. Okay, and I think even while you're being screened, it's not a bad idea for you to just come and join us. And then the court watching, you're going to do that within 14 days. One day of court watching. All right, and the referral. You can do this. And if you have to do it all by yourself, then do it all by yourself. Okay, but you can do this. Thank you, Your Honor. I will see you Monday morning because I got court watch. All right. Yeah, we'll talk to Kara on the court watching, and then Tuesday morning you will be here on time, right? Ms. Bechtel, 0830, military. Okay, Thank good. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, don't screw up. One, parent two, this is a misdemeanor punishable by up to 90 days and or $500. A consecutive sentence may be imposed under MCL 750-506A if the assault was committed in a place of confinement. Sir, did you go over your constitutional rights with your attorney? I have not called anyone. Listen to my question or we'll be here all night. I can't understand what you're saying. Excuse me? I can't understand you. Then put your ear down there so that you can hear me. And if you can't hear me, just say, I can't hear. Did you go over your constitutional rights with your lawyer? No. Okay. Can you hear me right now? Yes. Sir, I'm going to go over your advice of rights form with you. If you Mr. Gazicki, are you waiting to go do matters next door? Uh, no, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Fanto's there. 
Okay, I just want to make sure. If you require accommodations to use the court because of disabilities, or if you require a foreign language interpreter to help you fully participate in court proceedings, please contact the court immediately to make arrangements. You've been brought to court on misdemeanor charges. I understand you all of that so far, sir. I think so. Yes, I believe so. Like, could we just go ahead and hire your guy? I don't know what to do, ma'am. Well, you don't have to hire my guy. First off, Mr. Cornelius, I don't have a guy. Mr. Gazicki is paid by an independent commission to represent Honor, people who Is there any way I can chime in here? I'm the Ms. victim Justice. on this case. Miss Justice. He has a disability. He has a traumatic yeah, brain injury. Ma'am, ma'am, thank you for bringing that to my attention. I'm going through this as slowly as I can, but I don't he need you piping off in court. I need to go through all of this with him. I know. I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is that he does not comprehend. He has a traumatic brain injury. Okay, I can thank you. Help. Can you. I am the yourself? victim, but... Okay. Sir. Yes. You understand that Mr. Gazicki, the attorney that's here today that you spoke with, Mr. Gazicki is not my lawyer. Mr. Gazicki is a defense attorney. He would be your lawyer. I'll take him. Thank you. Okay. And you don't have to pay for Mr. Gazicki. He will get Mr. Gazicki to be your attorney at court expense. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. So you don't have to pay for Mr. Gazicki. Now I have to tell you, you have the right to a trial. Do you understand that? Yes. And at that trial, you would have the following rights. You'd have the right to call witnesses to speak for you at trial. So if there were witnesses that saw things that you wanted to bring to court, you could get the court to sign an order to get them here. Do you understand that? Yes. And you have a right to see and hear and question all of the witnesses against you. Do you understand that? Yeah. When can I do that? Right now? Because I've obviously been here since Saturday fucking night. Nobody told me nothing about making a phone call or nothing. All I'm right. Mr. Cornelius. Calm down. I am trying to get you through this hearing so that we can set a bond, but I can't set an, a bond while you're acting like this in court. I have to make sure you understand your rights. And at the end of this, we, we will talk about bond, okay? Okay. Okay. You cannot, your trial will be set in the future to answer your question though. You also have a right to be a witness for yourself or to remain silent. And if you chose not to be a witness, the prosecutor could not talk about you, your uh, refusal to testify. Do you understand that? You're using too many big words for me. I don't understand any of the words that you're saying. Okay, I'll try and I'll try and use different words. All right. You know, when you see, um, let me see how to say this. So you always hear on TV that you have a right to remain silent, right? Yes, you don't have yes, to talk. Yes, yes. You do not have to talk to police officers. Do you understand that? Yes. You do not have to talk to anybody in court. Do you understand that? Yes. And you don't have to be a witness. You don't have to take the witness stand if you don't want to. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. And the law considers you to be innocent. Do you understand that? No, obviously I like I just can't see the law considering me to be innocent when I'm sitting in jail. She's not. Okay. Well, you're arrested for a crime, sir. And we're trying to get through this hearing, and I'm what, letting what? you know. Mr. Listen. I mean, Mr. Gazicki, I don't know at this point if I, if I can't get through this, I don't know if he's going to have to, if you're going to make a motion to refer him, if he can't understand what's yes, happening Honor, in court. I mean, if yes, he can't Honor, understand. Would, at this juncture, I would ask for a competency um, referral. Yeah, he doesn't seem to understand what's happening. I cannot arraign him properly without that. Your Honor, if I could speak, he doesn't understand. And, and okay, the level, the level of severity. So that a determination as to whether or not this hearing or any hearing can proceed is going to have to be made. So 
the level of severity of his his he is dangerous. I have a fractured skull. All right. All right. Okay. All right, Mr. Gazicki, I'm granting your motion for a referral for competency. Ma'am, is that injury that you sustained as a result of this incident? What Ms. Justice, the, the, I'm finally asking you a question. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, this was not Wilkins, a couple is days this ago. This was not from him. Is the skull injury from him? Is that your allegation? Yes. Yes, that was the October 29th incident, not just a couple days ago. Absolutely not. I did not touch you, Alicia. That was not me. All right. Okay, Mr. Gazicki, a personal bond is certainly not appropriate. We're referring him for competency. Um, I, I definitely have a concern about danger to the community, and it's clear to me that Mr. Cornelius... Um, Your Honor, he purchased a weapon... He purchased a handgun two yes, days yes, after. Yes, yes. Okay, Mr. Gazicki, I'm not taking that into consideration. I, I don't think I need to. I have concerns about the safety of complaining witness, Ms. Justice. She said enough. She needs to speak with the prosecutor. We'll make sure that she has contact information so that she can do so at the end of this hearing. Um, but I do not think that a personal bond is appropriate. He has a $5,000 cash or surety bond. He's referred for competency. You're to appear in court as directed. You're not to leave the state without permission of the court. You're not to commit any new crimes while released. You're to immediately notify the court of change of address or phone number. You're not to have any contact with Miss Justice or her home or employment. No contact with her whatsoever. Miss Justice, do not accept phone calls from him. He is to have no contact with you. No drugs or alcohol, no weapons. Your Honor, he is on SSI disability and his dad is his financial legal guardian. Okay. He is okay. a danger to society. Sir, he is in the Wayne County Jail on a $5,000 cash bond. If he has any contact with you, Ms. Justice, you are to notify the Wayne County prosecutors and the police department. We're gonna make sure you have, Ms. Justice, have you had any contact with the victim's advocate? Yes, I have. I am currently homeless in my car okay, with my dog. I just need to know if you've talked to the advocate and you have? Yes, first step. Okay, wonderful. I wanted to make sure that you've had contact with them. Okay. Um, all right, we're all set. Thank you. Thank you. I have, I have one question. Uh, when will I be released? Oh my gosh. I'll explain that to you. <laughs> yeah, they'll explain that to you, sir. Relax, Mr. Good afternoon, Your Honor. James Gazicki on behalf of Mr. Weiss. Wave reading of the complaint, stand mute. He's going to plead uh, guilty to reduce charge of failing to display. He owes approximately over $1,200 in. Uh, default of tickets. He's asking for a payment plan on everything, Your Honor. Sir, do you understand everything your attorney just said? Yes, ma'am, I do. All right. Did you go over your constitutional rights with your attorney that are outlined on this advice of rights form? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand those rights? Yes, ma'am. Did you sign and date this or did you give your attorney permission to sign and date this form, sir? Yes, ma'am. Are you withdrawing, sir? Excuse me, ma'am? Are you withdrawing? Withdrawing, what do you mean? Okay. All right. You understand that failure to display is a misdemeanor punishable by up to 90 days in jail on a fine of up to $100 plus court costs and statutory fees? Yes, ma'am. I understand. Okay. And, um... You understand if you're on probation or parole and you enter a plea of guilty, sir, that um, you'll be waiving the trial rights on that form. There will be no trial of any kind. 
Yes, ma'am. But I'm not on probation or parole. Okay. You understand that you're not going to have a trial of any kind if you enter a plea of guilty? I mean, I, I was guilty. I'm not, you know, it's really something I can't fight. Okay, so don't... let's go back. Listen, slow down. You okay, got to answer the question, sir. Yes, ma'am. You, you want to read rights with your attorney. Do you understand yes. that if you enter a plea of guilty, there will be no trial of any kind and you'll be waiving those trial rights? Yes, ma'am. Okay. How do you plead to the charge of failing to display a valid license? I uh, plead guilty, Your Honor. I'm just asking for a payment plan so I can make the payment. So I can get out. All right. Well, I don't really believe that you're going to make a payment plan, sir, but we'll get to that. Mr. Honor, Weiss, I need you, Mr. Weiss, if you want me to take this plea, then you need to help me get through the plea, okay? Okay, okay. Has anyone forced you to get you to plea? No. Nobody's forced me to. No. Has anyone oh. promised you anything other than the plea agreement to get you to plea? Just asking for. Uh, Has anyone promised, anything? Nobody promised you anything? Nobody's promised me nothing. No, I was just hoping for it. Okay. And you understand I could give you up to 90 days in jail. Yes, ma'am. I understand that. I'm just I'm hoping that you don't. Are you pleading guilty of your own free will? Yes, ma'am. Maybe I shouldn't be, but... Were you operating a... Well, it's your choice. It's your free will, sir. You I want just, a minute I... to think about it, Mr. Uh, Weiss? I mean, I'm guilty of it, though. I mean, I don't, there's nothing I can do about that. I can't beat it. That's not something I can beat. I mean, I was in the vehicle. I guess I was. So, do you want me to accept a guilty plea? Yeah, I accept it. Were you operating a motor vehicle in the city of Taylor on, this, on February 9th of 2023? Yes, ma'am, I was. While you were operating that motor vehicle, was your license suspended, revoked, or denied? Yes, it was. Did a police officer ask you to show you him a valid license? Yes, he did. Did you, did you fail to do so? Yes, I did fail. Oh, I didn't have Mr. Mr. Gazicki, are you satisfied with that plea? Satisfied, Your Honor. Okay. I'm going to accept the plea as knowing and voluntarily given. So I have all of these tickets in default from February. No proof of insurance. The expired plate. One headlight. No registration. All of those tickets together equal $1,200. Mr. Weiss, do you work? Yes, ma'am. I was working at Crown Royal. It's Crown Brooklyn. They're out of wine dot. Okay. All right, Mr. Gazicki, I'm going to give him a payment plan. I think he needs treatment, but I can't force that. Fine of 100, court cost of 100, state assessment of 50, and a crime victim's rights fee. 75 those last two are mandated by the state of michigan that's 325 plus 1278 wow that's a lot yeah you want to do some jail crime and clean up instead get some medically want... assisted treatment in the jail get some suboxone or something mm -hmm. help you get come down off this i'm good i'm good on all that i just i know to... all right sir all right payment I'm plan of... i'm gonna stay clean I'm already paying a fifty dollars a month. If he doesn't comply with the payment plan, he's going to county.